All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the um, third lesson on circular motion and gravitation. And here's where um, we're going to get to, um, we're going to um, go back and look at what we learned about gravitation last year, and we're going to kind of apply it to this context of uh, circular motion. So uh, Newton discovered that gravity attracts two objects depending on their masses and their separations which is to say how big they are and how far apart they are. So um, Fg we see is proportional to the two masses, so to m1 and to m2, whereas it's inversely proportional to the square of the distances between their centers of mass, or it's proportional to 1 over r squared. So while this means that the bigger an object is, uh, the more gravity, um, uh, more attraction due to gravity you would feel towards it, um, the separation is going to matter more. Um, because the r value is squared. So for example, the sun is, is far more massive than the earth is, but we're more attracted to the earth because we're so much closer to it. So um, this leads to uh, Newton's law, universal law of gravitation, which is if it's proportional to m and m and 1 over r squared, I've got m1 and m2 over r squared, it's proportional to all those things, all I need is this constant factor. And we're going to see this all the time in physics, where um, they're, they're related proportionally, but in order for them to actually um, convert, say, into, into standard units of newtons and kilograms and meters and all that stuff, there's some sort of constant that we have to multiply it by to get it there. So G is our universal gravitational constant. And uh, it's constant everywhere in the universe. And it has a value of approximately 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And the units are Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. So it really is just a conversion factor. It's one of the sort of fundamental rules of the universe that shows us how strong gravity is. And note that it is really, really weak. It is times 10 to the negative 11. So we'll see as we talk about more forces after this, like electromagnetic force, that uh, the force of gravity is actually surprisingly weak. You need a really big planet before you're going to experience um, any serious amount of gravitational pull. So um, we're going to calculate the force of gravity between two 75 kilogram students as they stand 0.95 meters apart. And so we'll see here that Fg 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Multiply that by 75 and then by 75 again. And divide that by 0 0.95 squared. Okay, so just a reminder too as we get into this unit that um, we're going to be dealing with really, really big numbers and some really, really small numbers. So I really uh, want to make sure that you're punching your scientific notation into your calculator like this. It should be 6.67 and then E negative 11, which is the same as times 10 to the negative 11. And then you don't have to worry too much about brackets if you do that because your calculator will know what that means. And so we can see that these two students will feel an attraction, but it'll be like 3.4 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons, which is very little. And so, um, like I said, you're going to need um, really large objects, really large moons or asteroids or planets or that sort of thing. If you're going to have any sort of um, gravity, uh, force of gravity that you're going to really notice. Um, and so um, one thing we'll look at here is sort of a, a proportional reasoning problem. So a question like this that might ask, OK, a satellite weighs 9,000 newtons on Earth's surface. How much does it weigh if its mass is triple and its orbital radius is doubled? So I'm just going to draw a little picture here because they haven't given us enough numbers to actually calculate anything. So I've got like a satellite and uh, it's orbiting the Earth. OK. And uh, remember that the R value is going to be the distance from the center of the Earth to the center of the satellite. OK, so the mass is going to be tripled and the r value is going to be doubled. So I'm going to double this out here. And now I've got an r value, I guess, is 2r. And I went from a mass of m to a mass of 3m. And so it doesn't really matter, uh, I should point out, which mass you call m1 or m2. But just like just for practice, I like to think of the planet as m1 and then the object as m2. It really doesn't matter, but I'll sort of default to that. So we can see here that 
the force of gravity should get stronger because it's a more massive satellite, so that should increase the attraction between them. But then the gravity should get weaker because they are further apart. And so we have to have a way of reasoning this out. And I would suggest the way to do that is to go back to our equation here where we've got g m1 m2 over r squared. And I know that this original satellite had a, ma had a weight of 9,000 newtons. So think about the factors that you changed. You kept some things the same and you changed others. So G is still the same, M1 is still the same, but then you tripled M2. Okay, so I might call this FG2. This is our, this is our, new, our new force of gravity and that was FG1. Um, and then we also doubled our radius. So this is 2R, but then don't forget that whole thing is squared, including the 2. So basically I have FG2, my new force of gravity. I'm just going to bring this 3 out front. Uh, is going to be 3 times G times M1 times M2, all divided by. Now 2 squared is actually 4 squared. So I've got a 4 there, and then I've got my R squared. And what you'll notice is that the rest of this here, this whole thing, is the same as this whole thing, which equaled 9,000 in the first place. So I could just substitute 9,000 in there. And I would get, well, it's really just 3 quarters of 9,000. And so this is just reasoning proportionally. This sort of makes sense. Basically, it should get 3 times stronger because of the mass, but it's actually gonna get four times weaker because of the increase in separation. So if I just punch this in my calculator here, I've got 9,000 times three divided by four, and I can see that 6750, my new weight is gonna be 6,750 newtons, okay? So I've kind, of, um, I've kind of buzzed over this. I've sort of maybe assumed that this is something you picked up in, uh, in a previous physics lesson, but it's important to recognize the difference here between mass and weight. So mass is literally the amount of matter that an object is made of. If you want to know your mass, one way to do that would be to count up all the protons and neutrons and electrons that make up your body and add those all up and they would total up to your mass. And of course, that would be in kilograms. Now your weight is a little bit different. The weight is the force of gravity or attraction that is acting on an object. And of course that is measured in newtons. So while in everyday kind of language we, we mix these two things up, we talk about mass and weight has been interchangeable, that's because we are all living on a planet where um, the mass and weight are going to stay relatively constant. Um, if however I was to pick you up and stick you on the moon, your mass would still be the same but your weight would change pretty dramatically because you're just not as attracted to the moon as you are to the earth. So your, the mass of an object is relatively constant no matter where it is, whereas the weight of an object is going to depend on how strongly it's being attracted to another object. So let's talk really briefly as well about satellites. So um, a satellite that goes around the earth such as the moon or any of the artificial satellites that we have orbiting the earth, the many many thousands of those that are going around us all the time, uh, it's going around the earth and it's constantly falling. But it doesn't fall towards the earth Rather, it sort of falls around the Earth. So if we had a, a picture here of, if I have my Earth, and then I've got a satellite here, we could see that it's going to follow this path around the Earth. And it might be circular, or it might not. And most uh, satellite orbits are kind of elliptical, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't really change things too much. As this goes around and around the Earth, you can see that no matter which position it's at, its velocity is going to be tangent to its motion. So the velocity would be that way. But the force of gravity, well, the force of gravity is going to pull towards the center of the Earth. So here I've got Fg pulling that way, and here I've got Fg pulling that way. And this, of course, reminds us of our centripetal motion. So as long as this satellite is going fast enough, then the force of gravity pulls it down and it keeps on moving in this circular motion and it can do this forever and ever and ever. Now these satellites have to move pretty quickly. 
uh, to to uh, to orbit the Earth, and especially ones that are close to the Earth have to move really quickly. But this is the exact same uh, sort of weightlessness that you would feel that you could feel here on Earth. So notice that as the the satellite orbits around and around, uh, the only force that's acting on it is gravity and that's actually what weightlessness is if you were in an elevator okay and for some terrible reason i decided to cut the cord and this whole elevator started to free fall the only force that you would experience while you're in free fall would be the force of gravity you would feel like you're floating up in the air kind of and that's why when you see videos of astronauts on the space station or doing spacewalks they look like they're just kind of floating around that's not because there's no gravity that's because there's only gravity acting on them so what about this what about a, a 4,500 kilogram earth satellite has an orbital radius of 8.5 times 10 to the 7 meters what speed is it going to have to travel at so if i have the earth here and a little satellite out here note that the orbital radius is the total r value from the center of the earth if i told you the altitude that tells you how high up it is but the orbital radius is this total distance here to the center of the Earth. It's literally the radius of the orbit. And so I recognize that this is moving in a circle, and anytime something moves in a circle, I'm kind of conditioned now to say, well, what does FC equal? I guess FC equals FG. And so the speed I'm traveling at, you can see, is only gonna really depend on how far from the planet you are. And so FC, I know that that's mv squared over r, and this is g m1 m2 over r squared. Now, just think about this for a second. Um, the, I've got some M's on this side. I've got M1 and M2. And then over on this side, I've just sort of got M. So if M1 is the planet and M2 is the satellite, just think for a second, what mass is this here in this force um, mv squared over r? Well, this is the thing that's moving in a circle, which is the satellite. So this must be mass 2, which means this actually cancels out. So even though I know the mass of the satellite, it's not really going to affect the, um, the speed it's going to need to travel at, which sort of reminds us if we're on Earth and we drop objects of different mass, the mass of the object doesn't affect how quickly it accelerates. So solving this uh, algebraically, oh, sorry, I should point out one other thing here, is that I've got an R on the bottom and then I'm R squared on the bottom, so I can actually cancel that R with one of those r's there. And then um, if I solve for v, I just need to take the square root and I end up with v is equal to the square root of g times m1 divided by r. And so we can see that, yeah, for a given planet, m1, for a given planet, say Earth, the speed is really just gonna depend on how far you are from that planet. So if I crunch these numbers here, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Now, uh, the mass of the planet is a given. It's on your formula sheet. So that's 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And then in this case, the R value is 8.5 times 10 to the 7. So let's just plug that in and see what we get. Okay, 6.67 E negative 11 times 5.98 E24 divided by 8.5 E7. And don't forget that I have to take the square root of this whole thing here in order to get my answer. And so I get 2,166, right around 2,200 meters per second, which is just over two kilometers a second. So they have to be moving pretty quick. Okay, that's it for uh, Force of Gravity.